Welcome back everyone. So what we will do now is look at another example in which uh, we will change the information structure that is uh, that we have in the Wittsenhausen problem. So where we what we will do is suppose we will assume that we did not have a uh, non-classical but rather a classical information structure. Okay. So suppose so here this is I will suppose now that the information at the first controller is just the, ob the observation y0. But the information and the information at the second controller in Wittsenhausen's problem it was only y1 but I am now going to assume that he also has access to y0. Now this, this now is a classical, classical information pattern. This here is clearly a classical information pattern. Now, why would, let us see what happens in this particular problem. So, in this in this problem, let's uh, what is the what's the sec, uh, let us see what we what what is going on. So, remember the second controller. What is the second controller attempting to do? Second controller, which is gamma two. What what is what is he attempting to do? Well, he is attempting to estimate. X1 from the information that he has and earlier uh, the problem was that he, he was trying to estimate X1 from Y1 only right and Y1 was X1 plus V but now we, our information pattern has changed. So, he is estimating X1 from I2 but I2 has changed to now y, Y1 comma Y0. So, he is estimating X1 so estimate X1 from y1 and what is y1 y1 is x1 plus v and also y0 which is simply x0 right so essentially therefore gamma 2 uh, gamma 2 star of i2 of the of i2 is conditional expectation of x1 given x1 plus v gamma x0. Now here now what is let us see what, uh, how, how this, this is this is therefore the optimal uh, control action as far as the second controller is concerned. It always remains this way that he has to just estimate uh, uh, these uh, the, the state uh, at time uh, this the, the state given the information. Now let us think how is it that the first controller should play this. So, the first controller now has to decide a gamma 1 knowing that he has to minimize that first stage cost. So, gamma 1 has to minimize here this expectation of k square u 1 square plus the plus this this term right the expectation of plus the expectation of x1 minus gamma 2 star of i2 the whole square. Now, what is gamma 2 star of i2 uh, that is that is this conditional expectation here right and i2 remember now has access to the information that is present in uh, that is that is present in gamma uh, in i1 as well right. So, here so let us see how this can this can be done. So, my claim is that you can actually uh, you can make this cost 0 as well ok. How do we make this cost 0? So, here is one possibility now one possibility is that suppose then that gamma 1 simply just is uh, gamma 1 of so suppose you choose u 1 to be gamma 1 star of x 0 to be 0. So, this is always so in other words regardless of the value of x0 gamma 1 star is now 0. Notice that this is different from the earlier approach in the earlier in the earlier assumption we did not have any cost on u1. So, what gamma 1 uh, gamma 1 did there was he said he, he was trying to cancel out the effect of x0 right. So, he was he, he and therefore, he made x1 independent of x0. Right. Whereas, here in uh, here uh, here what is happening is that 
here he is he is choosing u1 to be 0. So, then x1 is still going to be dependent on x0, but then that is not a problem because x1 even though x1 is dependent on x0, x1 now is uh, uh, the, the x0 is now known to, uh, to the second controller. So, what would happen in this case? So, u1 is equal to gamma 1 star uh, of x0 equal to 0, this would give you x1 equal to x0 and therefore x1 plus v would also be equal to x0. So, therefore, this problem here, this is about then becomes the problem of estimating x0 itself from from y0 comma uh, from from i2 and what does i2 contain well it contains x0 and x0 plus v remember this was y0 and this is this here is y1 so the the, the second uh, the second controller's problem then becomes that of estimating x0 from x0 uh, comma x0 plus v and this this problem is obviously trivial because if you want to estimate x0 given given this information since this information itself tells you what the value of x0 is we already know what the optimal uh, uh, error what the optimal thing is going to be it's actually going to be 0 the op, you will actually get an optimal you will get an error equal to 0 so as a result of this u1 star u1 itself this becomes equal to 0 and this second term also becomes equal to 0 so therefore this this therefore gives you that gamma 1 star equal to 0 and gamma 2 star of x0 com gamma 2 gamma 1 star of x0 equal to 0 and gamma 2 star of x0 comma x0 plus v equal to x0 is optimal so in other words so what is this uh, what is this taught us what we did was we looked at now the Witzenhausen problem itself, but we looked at it uh, uh, without the non-classical information structure. So, we assumed that the information structure is classical and in that what we found is that the problem actually is rather simple. It is extremely easy to decide uh, what to do. In fact, you can get the global optimal, uh, the numerically optimal cost uh, by using a bunch of very simple controllers. So, this now uh, again let us go back to what I was saying earlier. See notice that because of this, because of this particular depend, because x0 was present here, out here, right, in this, uh, uh, when we were estimating x0 from x0 plus v, things became very, very simple for us. Because it was possible for the first controller to, to choose an action in such a way that the second controller's job becomes extremely easy. So, he chooses his gamma 1 in such a way that the second controller can estimate the next state which is x1. So, he can he leaves the second controller with a state x1 to estimate uh, uh, such that it can be estimated from x0. And this is something he can do because no, no matter what the first uh, no matter uh, you know uh, no matter what we have we have second controller always has access to x0. So, the first controller therefore has to does not have to bother about what information is going to be there with the second controller, he just has to give the second controller the right sort of target to estimate, right. And this, this basically is the is what happens in us in a uh, in a problem when you have classical information structure. When the information structure is classical, the 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 uh, the, the 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 first controller does not have to worry about this the about what is it that the second controller ought to know you know through its uh, does not have to choose its actions in order to influence the information of the second controller right so that's so we this uh, so this i uh, you, if you recall i had called this the dual effect and we uh, the, that particular phenomenon you see that here there is no dual effect this is uh, the there is uh, this is only a for, the, the x0 is already available here. So, the so what the second controller for the first controller does does not affect the information of the second controller and he just simply uh, uh, he uh, you know. 
So as a result of that the first controller can plan in such a way that the second controller's error becomes 0 and as a, and simultaneously his stage wise cost also becomes 0. So what we are seeing therefore is that the information structure is essentially the culprit in, in, in this problem and, and Witzenhausen showed exactly this. Uh, he in fact, uh, uh, he, he, so if you take a problem with classical information structure the problem is trivial. The minute you take away this, this uh, the, the, uh, the classicality of the information structure the problem collapses to an extremely hard problem. So let us try to understand in uh, this this problem from a slightly different perspective, and uh, so that we, uh, uh, you know, we get some more a different kind of intuition for this problem. See, the the one, one way in which we can think of what's happening in this in this problem is that we can think of as I as I keep saying there are these two controllers. One way in which we can think of what's happening here is that these are actually two different agents. The 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 first here, the first agent here is a field agent. This agent is you can say is a is a field agent, he is he is trying, he is the one who is in the field trying to make, he is the one who can observe the uh, the, the ground state, the state in the uh, in the actual uh, in, the, in the field, right. The 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 so gamma that is your that is your agent gamma 1. Gamma 2 is the one who has who wants to who wants to know a certain thing uh, know a certain state. So, he wants to know in this case he wants to know x1 right. So, gamma 2 is uh, is this agent who is who wants to know x1, but x1 is not some kind is, is not some fixed state x1 itself is dis, is uh, is disturb is is uh, shaped by the by the actions of the of the first guy. The, so the field agent has to send a signal or send some information to the to the to the to his supervisor which is gamma 2. The supervisor then uses that information to estimate x1. But x1 is also changing based on the signal or based on the information that the that the that the field agent sends to the second control to the second to, to his supervisor right. Moreover there is the, the so, so that is that term here is that this influence of where the where the field agents action ends up uh, influencing the second controllers uh, second controllers cost or the supervisors cost that appears based on the uh, based on the, the uh, because of the dependence of the cost on the field agent's action. So, this this x2 here remember x2 depends on x1 and x1 is chosen x1 is uh, gets influenced by the choice u1 uh, which is which is just a function of x0 uh, which is gamma which is uh, gamma 0 of x0 right. So, so the, the 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 what the field agent here does influences uh, influences u1 and therefore in turn influences x1 right and x1 is the thing that the, sub, that the supervisor was trying to estimate right. Now the supervisor also has to uh, he has to he has to estimate based on some information and that information itself is a noisy version of x1 right. So what the information with the supervisor is y1 and the 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 uh, the, the this this and this itself depends on the on the policy uh, uh, on the policy uh, uh, gamma 1 chosen by uh, chosen by the field agent right. So, the field agent has to decide what to tell the supervisor knowing that what the supervisor wants to estimate and based on which he is going to estimate and the information based on which he is going to estimate is both influenced by his action by his choice right. Now, the supervisor does not hear what the field agent is saying in a perfect way. So, whatever the so the, the field agent uh, sends uh, uh, you you know chooses an action u1 uh, that gives you an x1, but x1 gets corrupted by noise on the way to the supervisor. So, the field agent is talking to the supervisor in a in a noisy fashion. So, there is a noisy medium that is present in between uh, which so the supervisor does not quite 
get exactly what the field agent is saying. So, that is that is what is going on here ok. Moreover, the field agent also has this dilemma that he has to, he you know if he exerts himself too much you know to try and beat the noise where he suppose he tries to uh, you know use a very high amplitude uh, signal to send to the supervisor uh, in order to uh, you know sort of cancel out the effect of noise then he incurs a cost for that as well. So, there is a cost term here notice that there is a cost term here which depends on u1 square as well. So, the field agent is therefore caught in this dilemma he cannot choose a very high u1 he cannot he has to also sig uh, signal some right amount of information to the supervisor what the supervisor estimate would estimate depends on what uh, the fa uh, field agent is signaling. But the whatever the, the information based on which the supervisor makes this estimate is also corrupted by noise and is a fun uh, and is influenced by what the field agent is saying. So, it is it is this this thing that come uh, that that happens in this it uh, is it is this it is this uh, uh, you know potpourri of, of, of various uh, various dilemmas that happens in this problem and and it has often been known by the, the by by this by the dilemma of 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 what is called signaling through action. So, it means that you have you have to concern yourself with the information that you are providing to the sec, uh, to the sec, to the future acting controllers alongside also concerning yourself with minimizing the cost. So, in, in once the information structure is class is classical the signaling effect is not present and therefore, you know you you you, you know you, you can focus only on choosing actions that minimize the cost and not worry about how your how you, you know what information is being sent to the uh, to the future time steps. So, this is the, this this here is uh, is one more uh, uh, angle to the Witzenhausen problem. Witzenhausen problem has can be interpreted in a in a in a third uh, entirely different way which is neither control nor economics and that problem that setup is is what is is the setup from uh, from communication. So, let us come uh, let us let us look at this setup again. So, we can think of this whatever I was calling calling here as the field agent. This field agent is is can be thought of also as a as as a transmitter right and whatever I was calling as a supervisor can be thought of as a receiver. Alternatively this can be thought of as an encoder and this can be thought of as a decoder and so on. There are, there are many uh, the, the U2 can be thought of as a decoder. These are uh, these these are different ways in which you can think of what's happening here. So, in a typical communication setting, you again have a transmitter who knows some information present in a remote location. This information is what is to be known or is desired to be known by uh, by the receiver here. The receiver wants to know this this piece of information, and the the, the and the two the two the transmitter and receiver are are uh, their, their their dilemma is that ok how much energy should we be spending on communicating and how should we be defeating the noise that is present in the medium. So, this this dilemma is again the one that we have seen already in the in the Witzenhausen problem. There is however, one subtle difference which is that although there is uh, it is essentially that kind of a setup where where you have uh, where you know there is a transmitter and there is a receiver here, but the, 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 the essential difference is that the receiver in a, in, a, in a usual communication setting the receiver is concerned with knowing this here which is x0. He is concerned with knowing precisely what information is there at the other end. Whereas, if you see the Witzenhausen problem in the Witzenhausen problem the second controller is trying to estimate x1 from x1 plus v. So, the second controller's goal is not to know x0 from x1 plus v, but rather x1 from x1 plus v. So, th this is where the Witzenhausen problem is, is, is a sort of a beast of its own. It is not ex it has a lot of similarity to the communicate to the communication setup ok, but it is not exactly the vanilla communication problem either. So, it is essentially a different type of problem which has not quite been studied in communication theory, 
But if one thinks of uh, com the communication problem and these, this problem in one light, you can see that well these are all problems with non-classical information structure. These, these all of these problems involve uh, involve a two different agents separated by by a noisy medium, where what what is known to one agent is not known to the other, but maybe with different goals. Witzenhausen's goal is 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 where the second controller wants to know x1 from x1 plus b. In the communication setup, the second controller wants to the second agent, which is the receiver, wants to know x0, which is what is known to the first agent. Right. So, you, as a result of this what we can see is that there are actually tremendous parallels between problems uh, once we allow for various information structures, tremendous parallels emerge uh, between problems in, in organizational structure which is uh, the kind of problem I just mentioned with the field agent and the supervisor and so on, the, th the theory of, 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 of teams and firms. The the and, and also uh, the and the theories of communication and finally the theory of, of decentralized control. Right? All of these start look uh, are actually ex closely related to each other and are variations and there are they are essentially variations that arise when we vary uh, uh, when we vary the underlying information structure or the underlying intent or the cost function in the uh, in the problem. So this this is this is another thing that we that we sort of uh, take back from the Witzenhausen problem, which is which is that it tells us how if we if we view control uh, the in under various information structures, it automatically lends itself to its to similarities in in problems with a number of that are present in a number of other fields. The final other point about the Witzenhausen problem here is because I mentioned the angle of communication, essentially notice that what is really happening in the Witzenhausen problem is implicit communication. You know, although that has not exactly been, uh, I have not precisely used that word, but really it is a some kind of communication is implicit here. Because the first controller is trying to give some information to the second controller in order to make a better decision in order to eventually minimize you know do that they can collectively minimize this cost. The second controller has to just do conditional expectation, but conditional expectation of what and given what that is being decided by what the first controller is sending. So there is imp the, so the so implicit in the in a problem with non-classical information structure is the, is an element of communication no matter you know how uh, how you look at it there is always this element that communication play where communication is is somehow happening okay this is again known through uh, in a different uh, by a different word in the in the economic community they call it signaling the, uh, uh, in uh, in in other uh, uh, it's it's known uh, it's known by signaling sometimes it's known by persuasion and so on but this is this is essentially what's happening in this uh, you know in the witzenhausen problem as well so what the main legacy uh, uh, that we take back from this problem is also another legacy that we take back from this problem is is that we cannot think of control as purely in terms of action but also have to think of control through communication as if there is an element of communication present in you know uh, in uh, in a in a sort of subliminal way in with a, in control problems so once we pose once we look at a control problem with non classical information structure it automatically has brings in it an element of communication so this is this is another uh, another uh, key uh, key aspect of the witzenhausen problem so what we will do in the next class now that we have discussed the Witzenhausen problem uh, at depth, what we will do in the next class is we will we will look at uh, uh, we will we will uh, we will go over certain some more variations of the Witzenhausen problem and to, uh, to see you know the dual effect in 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 uh, in more in a more in a much more pronounced manner. We will also quickly review the proof that Witzenhausen had for the optimality of nonlinear strategies. So that is coming up in the next class.